Hi there. Um, I believe we're going to do a series on partial differential equations. Um, I guess we'll get started with the first order. So, uh, for our partial differential equation, as you probably know, um, partial differential equations arise when there's more than one variable, whereas ordinary differential equations only use one variable. So for this partial differential equation, we have three variables. Um, you'll always find three variables, at least for first order. Um, actually, sometimes you might find two. It depends. But anyway, um, so what you'll notice here is we have P, Q, and R. And that's the things you need to keep in mind while we're dealing with this type of problem. All right. So, first thing we need to do is find a general, sorry, an auxiliary system. Uh, then we'll find the general solution after. So basically, where you find p, or how to find p, q, and r, is basically dx corresponds to p, dy corresponds to q, and then whatever's left is dz. Right? So, you have your p here, corresponds to your dx. So you're going to have dx over p which is equal to dy over q, and then dz over r. All right? And then you're going to form your solution in this form. Capital F, or you could use any variable, g, of a, b is equal to 0. Or the other form, and more useful form, is b equals f of a. So we'll get started with a problem. All right? So here's our problem. Find the solution to the partial differential equation, or PDE. Um, so you're given a 2 dz over dx plus dz over y, so dy is equal to 2y, and you're given some initial condition. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to identify what p is. So our p in this situation is whatever corresponds to dx. So that's just 2. Whatever our q is, is whatever corresponds to the dy, which is just 1. And whatever's left over, or on the other side of the equation, is just r, which is 2y. So then quickly, if we set up our auxiliary system, we're going to have dx over 2 which is equal to dy over 1, which is equal to dz over 2y. All right? So the next thing we have to do is we have to solve for them, solve for x, y, and z. So we have these two equations here. Let's just start with them. They look pretty nice. So you have dx over 2 is equal to dy. And we can simplify that a little bit by having uh, dx equaling 2 dy. And then we just integrate, so we can find x and y. So then we have x here, which is equal to 2y. But you must also include a constant on either side of the equation. It doesn't matter. So I'm just going to put it on this side, just because I have space. Um, and then you want to solve for your constant. And you'll see why in a bit. So you have uh, x minus 2y, right? And then the second is you just need to combine some other forms. So dx with dz or dy with dz. Uh, can we combine dx with dz? The answer is no, because there is three variables, and we can only solve for two. Right? So you have dx. So you have x, z, and y. So we can't do that. So let's try the next one. dy and dz. So let's see, you have y, z, and y. Perfect, we can use that one. OK, so that will be our second one. So I'll be dy is equal to uh, dz over 2y. Simplify that out. We'll get 2y dy is equal to dz. Right. Let me integrate both sides, and I should 
copyright, and that will give us y squared plus some constant b is equal to z. Right? So I put it on this side this time, so it doesn't matter which side you put it on. And it doesn't even have to be the same variable like I did here, so that was just coincidence, I suppose. Um, so solve for b. b is equal to uh, z minus y squared. All right. So now we put it in that more useful form that I told you. B is equal to f of a. All right. This is our magic form. Okay. So our b here is z minus y squared. Right. It's right there. Which is equal to um, f of x minus 2y. So the only thing we have to do now is apply our boundary condition because this is our general solution. Right? So apply z of x naught, sorry, z of x and 0 is equal to cos of 3x. So here we can just plug in uh, cos of 3x minus 0 squared, remember that's 0, is equal to f of x minus 0. 2 times 0 is 0. So then f of x is equal to cos of 3x. Right, so what we're going to do here is um, let t equal x. You'll see why I'm doing this in a second. So it just makes it easier to conceptualize, I think. All right. Um, so f of t is equal to cos of 3t. So we're nearly done. We just have to do the last thing, which is just substitute it back into our old equation. So here's z. I'm just going to isolate z by itself by bringing y over onto this side. So then you have f of t, right, plus y squared, right? But this isn't the form we want. We want the form in x minus 2y. So this is where you, l where you replace t with x minus 2y. squared. And then I'm just going to try and squeeze that in there. So the last thing you have to do is just plug in for this function, which is going to be 3t, right? So you're going to have um, cos of 3 times x minus 2y, close bracket, plus y squared. And this badass little equation is our solution to this problem. Alright, fantastic.